Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth from The Smart Stitcher. In this week's video we are going to be talking about why use leather acrylics if you are wanting to decorate your leather. So let's get into it. With the modern paints that we have today, it's possible to paint virtually any surface and decorate it. But not all of those types of paints are suitable for working with leather. Um, certainly oil colour wouldn't be appropriate and neither would an ordinary artist's acrylic and I'm going to sort of explain why in just a moment. One of the key things that is going to be affecting your sort of choice of paint for your job is what's the end purpose of the product going to be because if you're thinking about what it's going to be used for that's then going to help you and inform you as to what you are perhaps going to be picking in terms of your brand of paint um, particularly if you are wanting say for example the leather to to bend and flex then you're going to want a type of paint that's going to be able to cope with that now there are more than two brands of paint available for leather so it's always worth investigating what's available in your area the two that i am familiar with are the feebing's acrylic dye for leather and also the angelus um, leather paints. These are sometimes also known as trainer paints as well and I'm going to just be sort of telling, giving you some examples today and sort of telling you a little bit more about them. So I tend to sort of use the Angelus just because I think they've got a great colour palette um, and they really do sort of sit very nicely. They work on the leather and the surface of the leather and you can also sort of blend them and sort of layer them a little bit as well. So one of the first things I wanted to show you is just really where I've had a little bit of an example where I've had a go at some acrylic pouring techniques with the leather and on the upper side here we have just ordinary leather acrylics and I have mixed them together just as they are but I've also um, added a little bit of water like you do when you are um, doing some acrylic pouring because I wanted to see the results. So this upper side is just the leather acrylics one with a bit of water one just with the paint on the lower edge here i've got some ordinary artist acrylics they look a bit like the sort of any that you can get from your local art shop and on one side i have just got the sort of pure paint and on the other side i've mixed in a little bit of water again because i wanted to just experiment with the um with the sort of pouring and see how how well it would go now one of the things that I've sort of noticed, certainly with the acrylic paints for leather, so they have a lot more by way of sort of bend and flex than the ordinary acrylic paints do. So the artist's acrylics don't tend to bend very well and they will often crack when you get to the sort of surface of the leather. So if I'm sort of just bending that, I can see that, yeah, it's sort of creased a little bit, it's marked, but it's not sort of showing the sort of same um, sort of adhesion as the other um, paints I've got on my sample here. So yes, the leather acrylics do have a really good bend and flex um, and also yes, the artist acrylics don't, certainly I'm not able to sort of crack it in any great depth today but I'm hoping that the camera is, is sort of picking up this one um, just because the ordinary artist acrylics don't have that sort of same characteristics and so one of the first reasons then is to make sure and you can see a few more sort of cracks appearing here the first reason is very much about that sort of bend and flex within the leather and I'm just going to zoom you in to show you an example of where this has sort of cracked on this one here and if I just move that, you can see that this is quite a, a sort of a soft leather that I'm easy, easily to, able to manipulate. But there are some of the cracks within the surface here that mean perhaps it's not going to be great for the product that I'm wanting to use it for. One of the first things I like to do before I sort of start painting my sort of final pieces is to always do a little test on an off cut of leather just to test the opacity of the paints to sort of see if I'm going to have to layer them to see how they take to the leather because each time you sort of have a different piece of leather you don't quite know what it's been finished with always although most of the time you will um, so you want to just sort of test what it is how it's been finished and then um, see how your paints will look against it now somehow you've also got to work out 
um, how you are going to transfer your design um, and this could be by sort of maybe freehand drawing it could be by using say carbon paper or it could be by having your design on some tracing paper and then pressing down with a ballpoint pen um, so there's lots of different ways in which you could transfer your design one of the things that you might also have to do as depending on how the leather has been finished which is why it's always really important to sample and to sort of really put your samplers through the, t the mill a little bit to make sure that they you know you have tested them um, and you've sort of scrunched them up you rub maybe rub them against something to see how well they sort of um, hold you may also find that if the leather you're using um, has a, a slightly waxy finish on it or maybe perhaps another kind of dressing that you may need to deglaze the area um, using a deglazer or and I have even sort of cheated a little bit on occasion and used some nail polish remover but I'm just working on the area that I'm going to be painting so I'm not applying a deglaze or anything like that over um, the whole of the surface it's just the areas I'm going to be painting so if I've transferred my design then that's going to be quite easy to see so prepping the surface is really important and equally as important is actually how you then treat the paint once the paint has actually dried. Now this can take, depending on the weather and the conditions in your area, you might find that it's, it's sort of dried very quickly within a day or so or you may need to leave it a couple of days. But you can also then think about how am I going to finish the paint? Do I need to sort of seal it in? Am I just going to put a layer of wax over the whole leather so you're looking to sort of pick the best method that's appropriate for your product most of the manufacturers that from what I've seen will also supply some sort of finish which you can then paint on as well and then of course if you realize that you've had any deglazer that sort of skips seeped out a little bit onto the surface of the leather you may wish to just sort of wax that afterwards as well now perhaps one final sort of point to note is that with your leather acrylics if you've prepared your surface properly you will get really good adhesion from the glue um, the Angelus paints have a really good color range and as I've mentioned you can mix them as well they also have the bend and flex that's really quite important um, when you're working with um, with leather particularly if you're making say a belt or if you're making shoes your paints are going to need to be able to cope with the movements that they are put through how long the paint lasts is going to depend on perhaps what you're doing with it once you've finished painting it and whether or not you applied any types of surface finishes or not so on here i have stamped some dragonfly impressions into my belt and the areas where there's quite a lot of wear and tear say around where the the belt holes are you can see that the paint has sort of cracked a little and it has started to sort of fade um, perhaps in a few areas whereas on the sort of towards the buckle end the paint looks really sort of quite crisp and we've got lots of detail there I have to sort of almost confess that I do quite like the sort of the wear and tear that you can pick up on a belt so where the paint's faded perhaps where there's a few more cracks that sort of really appeals to me because I think that's part of the the life that the product has so it's really important that you're sort of happy with the finish you're happy with those end results and always and I say this in a lot of my videos is to do a test um, this belt now is probably about nearly eight years old so it's having a, a pretty good test life at the moment thank you very much for listening everyone goodbye I have to sort of almost confess that I do quite like the sort of the wear and tear that you can pick up on a belt so where the paint's faded perhaps where there's a few more cracks that sort of really appeals to me because I think that's part of the the life that the product has so it's really important that you're sort of happy with the finish you're happy with those end results and always and I say this in a lot of my videos is to do a test um, this belt now is probably about nearly eight years old so it's having a, a pretty good test life at the moment thank you very much for listening everyone goodbye